Good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's like my network is unstable tonight because I can see that um, there are a few people are trying to log in. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry about this, guys. I I hope you can hear me. I hope you can hear me. My network today is very, very unstable. My network today, I don't know what's happening with my network, but then it's very, very unstable. For the first time, I'm like, what the hell is happening? But then let me project so long. Apologies. I don't like being late. <laughs> Apologies, guys. I don't like being late. Thank you, Rose. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rose. So because it was my delay, let's just give the others a few more minutes, two, three minutes, and then definitely we can continue with the order of the day. Thank you, Achiva. Thank you, Achiva. Let's just give them a few more minutes and then we can con continue with the order of the day. Welcome again, welcome again, guys. I missed this class and apologies uh, that we couldn't have uh, a class last week, Monday. Um, you know, matters of life, some things that are going to come in that you must attend to. And welcome again, welcome. Yeah, some things that we must attend to. And if such happens, definitely we must attend to them. And thank you very much again for being early. 
and welcome to the Antlex Nurse Mechanic. Welcome to your Antlex Guru. You are at the right place, ladies and gentlemen. You are at the right place, ladies and gentlemen. I know that all of you who are here, you are preparing for your Antlex exam, correct? And um, if you need extra tutoring, if you need extra help, if you want someone to hold your hand, please do not hesitate. Please do not hesitate to come and join us. Please do not hesitate to come and join the Antlex Guru because definitely you'll be in the right place. Uh, so what we do is that we have classes on a daily basis. The classes are very interactive. We do systems. We do salads. Remember the main aim of us having this class because I know that it's not all of you that know this. This person called the Antlex Guru, isn't it? You see, right now it's slow. It's not letting some people in. It's not letting some people in. Yeah. I think if it continues giving us a problem, we will have to switch. Uh, I'll have to switch to the mobile because I don't know what's wrong with this. Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi. <laughs> Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi, guys. But then I hope again okay, well with your endless exams preparation. You came in nicely, Ativa. Can you hear me, guys? Or you cannot hear me nicely. Let's say if you cannot hear me nicely, it means that I will take her. <laughs> well, Let me log out and then I'll try to log in again. Let me log out and then I'll try to log in again. This is the first I'm seeing something like this happening. Let me log out and then I'll try to log in again. Don't go anywhere. This is not your fault. It's not my fault. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna log out and then I'll try to in again.
Okay, I don't know. Is it better this time around? Is it better this time around? Okay. Apolog apologies, 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 guys. Apologies, 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 guys. But please do not hesitate to let me know if you cannot hear me nicely anymore. Please do not. Okay. Thank you, Juliet. I know that there are quite a number of people who want to join in, but then we are struggling. Ah, oh, Achiva. Nice. <laughs> yes, Achi, Achi. Nice, I, 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 but it's not admitting people as fast as I wanted it to admit people. It's not admitting as fast as I want. Them to be admitted. Okay, it looks like they're slowly coming. So as I was saying again, guys, there's also, ah, you see. It's doing things that I don't know. It's doing things that I don't know. But for those who cannot, for those who cannot log in, uh, Hazel is going to post a YouTube channel. For those who cannot log in or for those who are failing to log in, um, she's going to post a YouTube channel. And then those of you, okay, I can see now people are coming in. And then those of you who are struggling, there is also the YouTube channel. And then if the maximum number is reached, if the maximum number is reached, and then there is the YouTube channel. Um, if the maximum number is reached, um, Hayes is going to post the YouTube channel on the group. Hayes is going to post the YouTube channel uh, on the group. But um, as I was saying, welcome, guys. Welcome to the Antlex Mechanic class. Like I stated earlier on that, yes, we usually have these classes on Mondays. And I was apologizing for last weekend because remember that last weekend we couldn't have a class uh, because of uh, personal reasons. But we are back here. We are in full force. And as I was stating that um, I'm very much aware that all of you Okay, thank you, Hazy. So as I was saying that I'm very much aware that all of you uh, here are preparing for your NTLEX exams, right? So the NTLEX guru offers private tutoring. Uh, she holds your hands. Uh, she makes sure that you understand the system. She makes sure that you also uh, know how to answer the case studies you know how to tackle the case that is because yes some of our students are going to come back and then they fell and then like and then they're like i don't know what happened yes you are not going to know what happened why because you do not know how to answer these case studies you do not know how to summarize the uh, the scenarios right so this is what the NTEX score is going to help you with right uh if you're having um any difficulties in any of the systems just gonna make sure that you cover the systems in a way that you understand. She's gonna make sure that you cover the systems in a way um, that you understand. So if any of you are interested, oh, so like I was saying that the classes are Monday to Friday. Sometimes we do, but because uh, she's busy doing something, right? Uh, but then Friday, you are given lots and lots of work that you're expected to do over the weekend. Here, when we do the case studies, um, we just don't give you case studies that you just go answer and then we post the answers. With the case studies, we go on the group because we are a group, nice, nice group that is very interactive. And then we discuss the case studies. That's where you also get an opportunity to ask if you are having any problems or if there is something that is getting you confused or if there is something that you do not understand. So definitely you do get an opportunity to ask. 
so that you get your answer right. So if you're interested in joining, there are the numbers there on the screen. I think all of you can see the numbers on the screen, which is it's either plus 2776-586-9099 or plus 267-725-71924. Nine you can send a WhatsApp on any of those numbers. You can send a WhatsApp on any of those numbers and definitely uh, we will be available to, to assist. And definitely if you need any more information, we will be available to give you that information. Uh, because they, sometimes it's difficult. You want to talk to that person who says that they're giving classes one-on-one, -on -one, isn't it? Because as much as you hear the voice, yeah, but you're like, hmm, but I still want to know it. So it's not a problem at all. You can either contact me or there's also Hazel. If uh, you can contact me, you can contact Hazel. Hazel. Hazel's numbers are the ones that are below mine. You can contact me or you can contact Hazel, right? I know that most of you now you're asking, hey, what is the price? Hey, contact us. Contact us. That is when you are going to get more information. But one thing I can tell you, my darlings, is that you are missing out on a lot. You are missing out on a, on a lot. Because yes, as much as you have the study material, but you also need some kind of support system, isn't it? Someone to give you that extra push. I'm also a student as well. I'm also given an extra push, right? But then because I know that I talk too much, <laughs> I know that I talk too much and I hope that most of you have taken the numbers uh, and then again, like I stated that because this is a big class, so it's impossible for me to open the mic. It's impossible for me to open the mic because uh, we are going to be on a circus, right? So um, I'm going to start teaching Tetralogy of Fallot. Today we are going to be doing Tetralogy of Fallot. At least when you leave this class, you are going to be having some kind of idea on what Tetralogy of Fallot is and how this tetralogy of fallot uh, is managed. Remember, I'm a cardiothoracic specialist. That's why I love cardiac. <laughs> but how can you not love cardiac? I mean, when you think of neuro, when you think of your cardiovascular, you think of now, uh, these are the vital organs, isn't it? How can you not love your own vital organs? You need to, definitely you need to understand what is happening, isn't it? All right. So now we're going to start with our tetralogy of fallot. I hope you took the numbers. I hope you took the numbers. Guys, even if you are a month away from writing your exam, you can call. Definitely, we will be able to assist because with your NTLEX nurse mechanic, uh, the NTLEX guru family, here we are a family. You heard me. I did not say group. I said family. We are a family. We look out for each other. We push each other up to make sure that each and everyone who is uh, part of the NTLEX guru family passes because the main aim is to pass you want to pass isn't it you want to reach your goal uh, or you want to reach your dream to become the usrn so here with the antlex next mechanic family that's what we do we support each other we are not strangers we support each other we pull each other up you know what i talk too much i might never stop i might spend the whole hour talking about the same thing so let's continue like i stated that uh today we will be doing the trilogy of far lot so please if you cannot hear me clearly you can write on the text that eh, your voice is breaking again all right remember when we talk about the trilogy of far lot this is where you are having four heart conditions meaning four conditions in one heart right and again when you talk about your tetralogy of far lot remember that these are defects with increased pulmonary blood flow, meaning that uh, in this tetralogy of fallot, you are going to have a decrease in your pulmonary blood flow, right? But before I can do my funny little drawings, oh, I'm here. Before I can do my funny little drawings, I told you that this is four conditions in one heart, right? Where you have the ventricular septal defect, I'm still going to explain it nicely, don't worry where you have your hypertrophied right ventricle, right? And then somewhere here, you have your overriding aorta, it's not written, right? And then you also have your pulmonary stenosis. So what happens? Let's go to my board. Let's go to my board. Now we start drawing. I hope you guys can still hear me, right? And you can see my blank board. 
I hope you can still hear me and you can see my blank board. Sweet stuff. So even though I don't have those fancy laptops where I can draw something nice and fancy for you, but let's hope that with the way that I'm going to draw for you, you are going to understand. <laughs> you are going to understand, but yeah, I know. I'm, 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 I don't know how to draw, but I try. Okay. I'm going to draw a heart. Remember when you did um, uh, your high school, uh, they told you that a heart is a four-roomed house, isn't it? A heart has four rooms. So this is the heart that we're drawing with our four rooms. Let me simply quickly label it. Let's say that this is the left side, right? And then we come back here. And then this is the right side, isn't it? And then remember you have your atrium, you have your you have your ventricle. Don't laugh at my heart. Meaning that right atrium, right ventricle, right? And then you have your left atrium. And then you also have your left ventricle. This is our heart. <laughs> I hope you're understanding my heart. Ooh, this is our heart. This is our heart. Are we together so far? Like I said, don't laugh at my heart, please. Okay. So, before we can even get to the tetralogy of Fallot, remember that, let me change the colors, the left side of the heart under normal circumstances it has higher pressures, right? The right side of the heart, it has lower pressures, right? The left side of the, the heart, it carries oxygenated blood. The right side of the heart, it carries deoxygenated blood, right? So when we talk about your tetralogy of fallout, I just stated that we have four heart conditions in uh, four conditions in one heart. The first one, I'm making that hole there that you see. We speak about your oh man, don't erase more. We speak about your VSD. I won't have space to draw if I'm supposed to write VSD. So the small circle VSD stands for ventricular septal defect, meaning that there is a hole between the right ventricle and the left ventricle, right? And then the second defect, mm -hmm, I'm opening up this space. The second defect, we talk about the overriding our water, right? So check this out. When they say overriding, they're saying that it's overriding, right? This our water is overriding. Where is this our water overriding to? The aorta is overriding to the right ventricle, right? And then the next one, let's draw the pulmonary stenosis. Because remember, the blood comes in from, uh, 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 from the right atrium, and then it goes to the right ventricle, and then it goes to the pulmonary artery so that it can go to the, go to the lungs to be reoxygenated again, isn't it? So we said the pulmonary artery, uh -huh, it comes after the right ventricle, right? So now let me try and they are saying that there is some kind of narrowing. There is some kind of narrowing. And I tried demonstrating the narrowing. I hope you guys can see. I hope you can understand. I tried demonstrating the narrowing. Are you with me, guys? Are you with me, guys? I hope no one is failing to call. All right. I hope no one is failing to connect. <laughs> you see, it's starting again. What is it doing now? Can you hear me, guys? All right, all right, let's go right, right ventricle. See, even though I'm using a highlighter there, I petrified right ventricle, that is where my highlighter is going. Thank you, Chinwe. 
I petrified right right ventricle. This is where my highlighter is going. So in a nutshell, when they say I petrified right ventricle, they are simply saying that the right ventricle is having an extra muscle, right? They are simply saying that the right ventricle is having an extra muscle. Right? So what happens here? Okay. Now let's talk about the pathophys because we can see what is happening. We know where the holes are. We know what is happening. But then you are going to say, but then how did how do we get to the mixed blood? All right. So remember, under normal circumstances, with your ventricular septal defect, it means that blood is supposed to shunt from the left ventricle to the right ventricle. Right. But here, yeah, you must remember that we are having this pulmonary stenosis, isn't it? And because of this pulmonary stenosis, it means that you are going to have an increase in the amount of deoxygenated blood in your right ventricle. Do you understand? It means that because of the pulmonary stenosis, because you remember that blood is supposed to flow from the right ventricle, pulmonary artery to the lungs, right? But then because of that stenosis, that narrow it means that we are not going to have enough blood that flows to the lungs, isn't it? And where does this blood go? It's going to get stuck in the right ventricle. And when this blood gets stuck in the right ventricle, it means that uh, uh, you are going to have an increase in the pressure. Now the pressure, the pressures are going to twist. It means that in your right ventricle, you're going to have higher pressures. In the left ventricle, you're going to have lower pressures, isn't it? And because of this uh, 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 increased volume because of this pressure that is happening here, the right ventricle is going to say, mm -mm -mm -mm, I've got too little muscle for me to be able to pump. The muscle is not enough for me to pump, right? And because the muscle is not enough for me to pump, it means I'm going to create more, uh, an extra muscle. The muscle is not enough. Let me create an extra muscle, right? Hence, this extra muscle that is created. Hence, the extra muscle that is created, leading to hypertrophied right ventricle. Leading to hypertrophied right ventricle. Are we together so far, guys? Are we together so far, guys? All right. So check this out. Because now the right ventricle is having an extra muscle than the left ventricle. What's going to happen now? It means that I told you about the pressures changing, isn't it? It means that now the deoxygenated blood, oh, it's in a hard, this thing. I'm sorry. Let me go back. It's not me. <laughs> okay, we're back. It means that now the deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle is going to shunt to the left ventricle do you understand that's why here on the left ventricle we say that we have mixed blood and that's why when you think of tetralogy of fallot it's also known as your cyanotic uh, congenital cardiac, uh, cardiac defect because remember we have your cyanotic we have your uh, cyanotic but then remember you will have to join the antlexness mechanic for you to be able to understand all of them, isn't it? Okay, let me try and admit these people. Maybe magic is going to happen. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know what's happening here, but we keep going, we, we, uh, we keep pushing, isn't it? All right. So like I was saying, that it means that you're gonna have mixed blood here on your left ventricle, right? Now we are left with the overriding aorta. I told you that here with the overriding aorta, some of the aorta is overriding to the right ventricle. Some of the aorta is overriding to the right ventricle. That is why when you talk about that goes to the aorta, it's not purely oxygenated blood. This is what? This is mixed blood. This is mixed blood already because some of the blood is coming from the right ventricle. Some of the blood is coming from the left ventricle and already the blood that is on the left ventricle is mixed. Do you understand, guys? Already the blood that is on the left ventricle is mixed. Can you still hear me, guys? Nicely so.
Did you understand? Okay, true, cool. Um, let's see, we have a hand up. Hey, uh, Joy, I see your hand is up. Hi, Joy. Uh, I see your hand is up. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? Or is it your nephew? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, you can. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. I need more clarification about the pressure you said it will be in the left ventricle. Okay. What causes that again. pressure? That pressure. How what? What causes what causes the pressure? You said it will be on okay. the left this ventricle. Is that, thank you, Chikutijo. This is telling me that you are late because I explained nicely to say that with your pulmonary stenosis, you are gonna have decreased blood flow to the lungs. The blood gets stuck in the right ventricle. When the blood gets stuck in the right ventricle, you are going to have an increase in the pressure on the right ventricle. When you have an increase in the pressure, isn't it? It's just like when you weight lift, isn't it? There's too much. When there's increase in the pressure, the right ventricle is going to form an extra muscle to try and accommodate the increasing in the blood volume because now it means that the pumping action of the ventricle must increase, do you understand? And because of that, it means that the pressures between the right and the left ventricles, they are going to switch. And when the pressures switch, what happens? It means that blood from the right ventricle is going to flow to the left ventricle. Do you understand, Joy? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, it's a pleasure, my darling. It's a pleasure, my darling, okay? I'm going to put this mute in again so that there is order. All right. You can put your hand down, Joy. If we understand, guys, can we go to the management? Oh, okay. Before we can even get, before we can even get further, let me do this. Before we can even get further, because this is where we also come to the hypersynotic spells. Remember that um, hypersynotic spells, I know we're going to get there. I just don't want to go back to come back here again. And, and draw the same thing. But remember, when we talk about your hypersynotic spells, we are saying uh, that there is increase in the deoxygenated blood that uh, that is going to the peripheries, isn't it? Hypersynotic spells, which is also known as the TET spells. Hypersynotic spells, which is also known as the TET spells, isn't it? So what happens, remember, for an example, if the baby is agitated, I'm not going to talk about the management. I just want you to see what happens and then you understand, right? So what happens here yeah, when the baby is agitated, when they are constipated, um, you are, are going to have increased blood flow. Let me see if I can try change the color. Yeah, I don't have enough choices of colors here, guys. Anyways. We have to go back to green. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. So as I was saying, you are gonna have because you you are gonna have increased volume of your deoxygenated blood way here, and because now if this baby is agitated, if this baby is crying, you have increased workload of the heart. When you have increased workload of the heart, it means that you are going to have increased amount of deoxygenated blood going into the aorta right and then when it goes into the aorta definitely it's going to go into the peripheries this is where you are going to see your child becoming blue i'm going to talk about the management of that. this is where you are going to see the child becoming blue guys this is interesting sometimes it even gets uh, as low as uh, as your five percent even your zero percent is very very interesting so before we even went further, I just wanted to explain this so that we understand the tetralogy of fallot before we can even talk about the management. So do we understand the tet of fallot, guys? 
Do we understand the tet of Fallot? We are happiness with the tet of Fallot. All right, if we're happiness with the tet of Fallot, now we are going to move from the drawing board back to reality. Drawing board, it was nice having you, but everything comes to an end. It's time for us. Thank you, Olaiwa uh, Law. Everything's come to an end. Everything comes to an end. It's time for us to move on. Okay, I see a hand. Let me see. Uh, yes, Achiva. But please, I don't know if I, if I had you uh, you talked about the uh, ventricular septal defect, overriding iota, pulmonary stenosis, then the then the fourth one. Hypertrophied right ventricle. Hypertrophied right ventricle. Okay, thank you. Pleasure, pleasure, my darling. Okay, guys, are we ready to move on? Okay, let me mute again so that there is order. Is that ten of microphone? All right. So what we did, um, we explained what exactly is happening, but then when we think of the causes. They further state that eh, it's like it's unknown, but they think it can be due to genetics, uh, women who are alcoholics, smokers, and even advanced maternal age, isn't it? But then <clears throat> you must remember that when it comes to the infants, the infants, they may be acutely cyanosed at, uh, uh, at birth, or they may even present with mild cyanosis that can progress over the first year of life as the pulmonary cell stenosis worsens. So what they're saying is that over time, the pulmonary stenosis is gonna become worse and worse and worse. And when it becomes worse and worse and worse, right? Your, the baby, the cyanosis is going to progress, isn't it? And how, are, how are, are they also going to present? I'm still on the infants. They can even present with a mama. They can present with acute episodes of your cyanosis and your hypoxia remember we're still going to talk about the hypersinotic spouse and remember i did tell you about the hypersinotic spouse that this occurs uh, when baby is irritated when they are crying when you want to inject them you want to take anything that is going to cause the workload of the heart to increase isn't it and again you must remember that definitely because this children's oxygen saturation uh, oxygen saturation of 70%, 75% is normal for them, isn't it? But then you must remember as much as we are saying it's normal, according to the body, it's not normal. That's why we even say that they, they'll always be tired, isn't it? They're going to present with fatigue because the tissues are not receiving enough oxygen and nutrients that they need. And definitely they're going to present with uh, uh, feeding difficulties because they are always tired, isn't it? And then when it comes to children, remember, because I did say earlier on that this pulmonary stenosis is going to worsen over time, isn't it? So what happens with children is that the cyanosis is going to become worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, worse. and when it's worsening, have you ever seen your children when they are playing around, when they are kicking the ball, what do they do when they are tired? They squat. So that is their position of comfort right? What do they do when they're tired? They squat. Now we're talking about children that are able to kick the ball around, isn't it? They are going to, their cyanosis is going to worsen uh, their position of comfort. They will be squatting, isn't it? Because squatting is a part of compensatory mechanism because it facilitates the increase. It increases the return of blood flow to their heart, isn't it? For oxygenation. And definitely some of the things they're also going to present with your clapping of the fingers because they are prolonged to low oxygen saturation over uh, over extended amount of time, right? And then how do we diagnose it? Number one, I told you about the hashistolic mama. Number two, they can go for the echocardiograph, isn't it? And in this echocardiograph, number one, uh, their heart is going to be boot uh, is going to be boot shaped, right? Number two, 
definitely are gonna see that stenting of the heart, uh, the, the stent, the, 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 I mean, the blood flow from the right ventricle to the left ventricle because of that hole. You are gonna see the pulmonary stenosis, isn't it? And then definitely are also gonna see the overriding aorta, isn't it? They can do the CT scan as well, it depends. And uh, if push comes to serve, they can also do the cardiac catheterization. But anyways, because with this kind of diagnosis, most of the time, we don't even need to do cardiac catheterization, especially with infants. Children, you can, but in, in infants, management, right? Uh, surgical management is either they will do a palliative shunt or they will do to pay. It's either they will do a palliative shunt or they will do a complete repair, right? So with the palliative shunt, meaning that they are going to go to the pulmonary artery. Remember the pulmonary stenosis that I drew for you in the beginning. They are going to go to that place that is stenosed or they are going to go to that place that is narrowed, right? And then they are going to put a stent in, in order for them to keep it open. Because when they keep it open, it means that they are going to get blood flow from, from the pulmonary artery and then to the lungs for reoxygenation, isn't it? Meaning that when you talk about the shunt, we are putting the shunt so that we increase pulmonary blood flow. Wow. We are going to uh, we increase pulmonary blood flow so that the increased volume of blood that is in the right ventricle will be able to shunt from the pulmonary artery and then to the uh, and then to the lungs for reoxygenation. Are we together so far, guys? I'm not speaking French, isn't it? Are we together so far? All right. If we're together, thank you, Funmila. Funmila. Woo, Ada is still is even saying yes. Please continue. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Just drink some water. Okay. And then there is also complete repair, right? Complete repair is usually performed in the first year of, uh, it's usually performed in the first year of life, right? It's usually performed uh, uh, in the first year of life because most of the time when it comes to, thank you, confidence, most of the time when it comes to complete repair, it's, it's, it's usually difficult to do, especially in our premise, isn't it? So they can do a complete repair, meaning that they'll try to close the VSD, they try, they try and fix the overriding hour and everything, isn't it? But then that can be done after in the first year of life. That can be done in the first year of life, isn't it? And then definitely you have your non-pharmaceutical. Remember that when you talk about your non-pharmaceutical management, this you usually do uh, because definitely come rainstorm thunder, whether you like it or not this child is going to go to surgery, isn't it? Meaning that you are going to be managing the signs and symptoms. For an example, uh, you are going to put them on your digoxin because you want to decrease the work rate of the heart, right? You can put them on your ACE inhibitors. Uh, they are presenting with fluid retention. Uh, you can also give them your diuretics, isn't it? So that's what they're talking about when they talk about non-pharmaceutical management. Your beta blockers as well, isn't it? Meaning that you manage symptomatically. And most importantly, it's also important to try and reduce, <coughs> um, it, 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 uh, to, to try and ensure that your baby does not get an infection because infection is one of the things that is uh, that delays this, uh, this baby to go to theater. So you see, if these babies are in the ICU, this is where now you see the importance of one is to one because Technically and obviously, a child who's presenting with these conditions is telling you that uh -uh, this child is immunocompromised. So what more do you want to do with this child? Do you understand? So we must protect them, ensure that they do not get infection so they'll be able to go for uh, to theater for uh, corrective surgeries, isn't it? Uh, uh, I did explain the hypersinotic spells to you, right? And but then what are we gonna do? Number one, definitely you must uh, um, calm the infant. You minimize what uh, the stimuli, right? And then you put them in your niches position, right? Definitely you need to give them your hundred percent oxygen. You give them morphine because you want to decrease the workload of the heart, isn't it? 
And if there are any IV fluids that are gonna be prescribed, for an example, they can prescribe diuretics you can give, isn't it? And definitely you need to document the occurrence action taken and how the infant is responding. And definitely if they are wearing tight clothing, you would need to listen to the tight clothing. Other things that can cause hypercyanotic spells, uh, you think of your infection. Because when you are having a child who's having an infection, it means that uh, 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 their temperature is high. And when their temperature is high, it means that uh, uh, the wet load of the heart increases. So it's not that complicated. Calm them down. Nature's oxygen, morphine, document, right? Loosen the tight clothing if they're wearing any tight clothing, right? If it's because of the uh, of the constipation, because constipation can cause that as well, isn't it? It means that you must you must treat the constipation as well. Because remember, the more constipated they are, or the longer constipated, the longer constipated they are, it means that they are gonna go into hypersanotic spots quite a number of times, isn't it? And you must again remember that when you talk about hypersanotic spots, you are having decreased oxygen supply in the brain, guys. And when you have decreased oxygen supply in the brain, it means that that child can go into cerebral hypoxia. So you see that is dangerous. You think of cerebral hypoxia, there is a lot, a lot. There's quite a number of complications. So you see, when you are doing your NCLEX exam, when you are studying your NCLEX exam, you must know how to think critical to say, okay, what happened to this organ? I know that now I'm talking about the heart, but the oxygenated blood, where does it go? What is going to be affected? What systems are going to be affected? And how are they going to be managed? Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? Lovely. Thank you, Joy. All right. We're almost done. Anyways. So, yeah, uh, we did talk about the hypoxia, isn't it? And we did explain the signs and symptoms of an infant, the signs and symptoms of a child. So, yes, the effects of chronic hypoxia, like I told you, oxygen saturation of around 70 to 75% is slow. That's why they can present with your polycythemia. Remember polycythemia? This is where you're having an increase in your red blood cells, isn't it? Uh, because of the low oxygen levels in the blood, clubbing as well, uh, it's, uh, because of the chronic hypoxia, poor growth and development, because remember that the, 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 the tissues, the tissues, they just don't need nutrients, but, but then they need, they need both the nutrients and oxygen for them to go through aerobic respiration or a, let me know why am i saying aerobic respiration wow i'm into the respiratory system i meant to say aerobic metabolism isn't it and remember already we spoke about the position of comfort which is squatting i hope we're happiness so far guys i hope we're happiness so far guys happiness 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 Okay, guys, and again, the ones who went to to the YouTube channel, please subscribe, please subscribe, please like and subscribe, right? Please like and subscribe. We're gonna be doing. I'm gonna. I'm, I will also be posting some videos. Okay, as I'm yapping, yapping because I know I'm I'm a master of yap yapping. Okay, thank you, Sarah. I'm a master of yap yapping. Anyways, I yap yap for a living, isn't it? Just like now, I'm yap yapping. Trust me, you. I can yap yap for three, four hours. <laughs> So like as I was saying, that on the page, okay, Mary Rose, okay, that was a mistake, okay. Do this question, I'm gonna give you a few minutes and then I'll choose one or two people. It's written Ted of Fallot. It's written, yeah, okay. Guys, don't be surprised, I'm still learning how to do this thing, whoa. <laughs> I'll post it on the group because it's a friend of mine who sent it to me. I'll post it on the group. Antlex, Antlex free class. Hey guys, I'm gonna post it. Our previous slide. Oh, Donna. Oh, okay. There. <laughs> no, you can you can still go there. I will post it on our group, guys. She will go and look and like and whatever. Let me post it now. Hazy, are we together? I'll post now. It's a friend of mine who sent me this to say that. Please post and subscribe, guys. I'll, I'll also be sending. Are you done, Donna? Donna? Okay, good. Okay. 
There is our question, guys. I, I sent a picture there on the other group, and I'm going to send on the other group. Just go like. I will send some short videos. Why not post on Pulse? Yo, Pulse is a big job. Remember Fan Milayo? This is a, a free class, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Fan Milayo wants Pulse. Fan Milayo wants Pauls. <laughs> Fan Milayo, he can join the class and then you can say, ma'am, I want Pauls. No problem. You can say, ma'am, I want Pauls. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I posted, I posted, I posted. Please like, guys. Please like. Please like the YouTube channel. I'll also post some short videos. There's there's a lot that is going to be happening, guys. You are missing out. We've started uh, quiz games as well, guys. You are missing out. I'm telling you. Tell them, Achiever. Okay. I'm going to select one person. I'm going to select Frank Russell. Due to time now, I must rush. Isn't it I talk too much? <laughs> Isn't it I talk too much? Oh, okay, <laughs> HM. Oh, hi, Frank Russell. <laughs> okay, let me read the question. Yes, my boy. The question reads, the nurse provides home, instru home care instructions to the parents of a child with heart failure regarding the procedure of administration of the joxine. Which statement made by the patient, the parents, indicate the need for further instruction? Answer number one, I will not mix the medication with food. Answer number two, if more than one dose is missed, I will call the pediatrician. Three reads, I will take my child's pulse before administration, administering the medication. Four, if my child vomits after medication administration, I will repeat the dose. And I choose answer number four mm -hmm. because um, <clears throat> you know digoxin is um, a, is um, a cardiac um, glycoside, and mm -hmm. um, you know it, it reduces the pulse rate of um, patients. So this patient taking digoxin and vomiting doesn't mean the mother should repeat the dose because we have to check for digoxin toxicity. And mm -hmm. it will be detrimental to that child. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, exactly. Thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Frankie. Achiva. Yes, ma'am. Why is your hand up? Uh, yes, I want to add to what he's, he just said now. Oh, you want to ask? Want to ask? Yes, I want to add. Oh, add. Add. Add, my dear. Yes, ma You know, normally, if the child vomits the medication, there is no how we can count and know the quantity that went in and even know how to measure the quantity that was vomited into the uh, 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 that vomit. So that is why we cannot even encourage the mother to give another dose because we don't know the quantity to be at the safer side. So thank uh -huh. you very much. Okay, thank you, my girl. Okay, guys, are we all happy? We can continue, right? Okay. This one is going to be the last one. This is going to be the last question. Hi, Sylvia. This is going to be the last question, guys. Please answer.
Okay. All right. Uh, Sorry about that, Helen. Yes, ma. Yes, baby, read the question for us. Okay. A pediatrician has prescribed oxygen as needed for an infant with heart failure. Which situation would likely increase the oxygen demand, requiring the nurse to administer oxygen to the infant? One, during sleep. Two, when changing the infant's diaper. Three, when a parent is holding the infant. Four, when drawing blood for electrolyte level testing. I chose four uh, because when the child is crying, which is expected when drawing blood, the child will look blue, have a blue spell. So mm -hmm. the oxygen won't be adequate at the time. Mm -hmm. Hence the need for administering more oxygen. Okay. Thank you, Heli. You're welcome. Before we can go further, before some achieve our addition. <laughs> achieve, do you have any addition? No, ma, no, ma, no, ma. Okay. okay. Confidence. Confidence, your hand is up. Confidence, your hand is up. I just want to say that uh, the workload of the house will also be increased. And uh -huh. uh, if you see uh -huh. every other situation does not require, the baby is calm in the parent's uh, arms, the baby is sleeping, there are all calm situations. But when you're trying uh -huh. to draw blood, when the baby gets to cry, it increases the workload of the heart. The heart will beat mm -hmm. faster and that will make mm -hmm. uh, the oxygen demand to be higher compared to the other situations. Exactly. Thank you, Confidence, for your for your addition. Your addition is, is, is very valuable. Very valuable. Very valuable. Okay. If that is it, guys, uh, I would like to thank you very much. Wait, you don't go. I'm not done with you. I'm going back to the first one. <laughs> I would like to thank you again for joining the classes. I would like to thank you, Frankie. I would like to thank you again for joining, uh, taking your time to join this class. I know sometimes I'm a big mouth. <laughs> I know I'm a big mouth. <laughs> but thank you again. Don't forget, if you want to join the... Um, the tutoring classes, they are the numbers. You can send a WhatsApp message. Uh, sometimes I give it my other number. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which number you're getting. Thank you, Doga. It does not matter which number you're getting. Hey, Bozu. <laughs> but then you can you can send a WhatsApp and definitely um, we will be able to assist. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frank Russell. <laughs> yeah. And definitely we will be able to assist. Thank you very much, guys, for joining the, the class. It was very nice. Everything with me confidence is simplified. Come join. You'll see how simplified it is. Thank you, Juliet. Everything with me is simplified, guys. Come join. You'll see how simplified it is. Nicely simplified. Nicely so. Nicely so. <laughs> hey, <Z. coughs> 
Okay, guys, have yourselves a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you, guys. Have yourselves a good evening. God bless you, ma. Okay, thank you, guys. YouTube handle, yeah. I, uh, Hazel is going to send it on the group. Oh. Thank you, Confi. Thanks. Thanks so much, Ma. You are blessed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hazel mm -hmm. is going to send the, 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 what you call it? What, what handle on the group? Guys, I'm not IT. I'm so much too fine this out. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. Don't laugh at me. I'm serious. Not this IT, IT, but but I'm gonna find it out. Ne? There are my numbers, like I stated. Kuli, good night. Hello, Thank bye. You. Thank you. Get in touch. Now get in touch soon. Soon. Oh, good night. You are miss you are missing out. The, the train is going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Toodles. No, <sighs> 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 <sighs>